In today's do-it-yourself repair video, we're going to be taking a closer look at a tankless water heater. I'm also going to show you how to troubleshoot your water heater in the event you're experiencing issues. The heater that you're looking at is made by EcoSmart. Other tankless water heaters will be extremely similar, how they work, though they may not be exact as to what you see here. First thing I'm going to do is point out all the components of the heater. You have cold water entering the heater. This part right here is an inlet temperature sensor. The flow sensor you see here, this has a little turbine inside, and inside here is what's called a Hall effect switch. It works on magnetism. The flow sensor is used to pulse the triac on and off, supplying current to the heating elements. Depending on the volume of water flowing through the heater, if it's a large volume of water, the triac is going to be pulsed on much longer than it's going to be turned off. The pulses are going to be on very long. If the volume of water flowing through the heater is very small, the pulses turning the triac on are going to be extremely short. And the off pulses are going to be very long. If you would like to learn more how this works, I have another video. You can click on the link you see right here. The video will open in a new window, which you can watch after you completed this video. In that video, the demonstration is using direct current, which is driving a MOSFET to control the load. In this case, we are using alternating current and using a triac to control the load. The red and the white is your DC power supply going to the flow sensor. The black wire is the output wire, which you would have to probe using an oscilloscope. Now, the average person is not going to have an oscilloscope, so I'm not going to get too involved in how to test this. Basically, what you're going to have to end up doing is, after I show you how to test everything else, would be process of elimination, that if the water heater is not turning on when the faucet is opened and power is supplied to the circuit, then you're going to know that it's a very good possibility that this flow sensor is not working properly, causing the circuit board not to turn on the triax. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to test everything. And if everything, if your heater still does not work using a flow sensor type like you see here, then at the very end, after you ruled everything else out, you can pretty much guess that this is going to be the problem. If your heater is not turning on when you open up the faucet to let the water start to flow. After the temperature sensor and the flow sensor, you can see that there's two semiconductors right here. They are bolted onto the flow sensor using a thermal transfer compound, this white compound, to help dissipate heat into the metal where water flowing through it will help to keep these cool. The triacs allow alternating current to flow into each one of these heating elements. So one of these will do this one, and one will do the other. Usually when these fail, you're going to notice a problem with your heating, you're not getting enough hot water. And the way to test these is very simple. These right here are 400 or 600 volt rated triacs, which have been removed from another heater. Remember main terminal 1, main terminal 2, and the far right is the gate. The test will be using 120 volts, which you're going to require a lamp cord. You're going to notice one side of the lamp cord is wider, it's polarized, this is the neutral, and the smaller blade is the hot. You're going to follow the hot to the end, and you're also going to notice that the hot side of your wire is smooth and the neutral is ribbed. You're going to need some jumper wires as well. The very end of the hot lead is going to connect into a fuse. 1 amp rated. After the fuse, it's going to flow into the load. I would use up to a 60 watt light bulb. You could use a ceramic socket with a standard light bulb, or in my case, I use a microwave oven 15 or 20 watt light bulb. After the light bulb, which will be the yellow one leaving, that's going to go into main terminal 2 on the triac. 
Now, main terminal 2, as I said earlier, is going to be the middle terminal. Main terminal 1, which is the first pin on the triac, that's going to go to your neutral or the wire where it's got the ribbing running along the edge of the wire, which is also connected to the wider blade of your cord. The last terminal on the end, the gate terminal, that's going to go over to here to a 220 to a 1K ohm resistor. Also from the other side of the bulb, or main terminal 2, which is the center pin, you're going to have another jumper wire, which you're going to be touching to the other side of the resistor right here. When you plug this in, you're going to be extremely careful. You're going to use one hand only, preferably use a glove, and you're going to touch the resistor. If the light goes on when you touch the resistor and off when the clamp is removed, then you're going to know the triac is functioning properly. Let's give it a shot. Going to touch right there. And we are now supplying power to the gate, terminal 3, and you can see the triac is switching on and off perfectly. So there's no problem with that triac. You can rule the triac out as being a problem. After water flows through the flow sensor, it then goes into the stainless steel tube. Right here you can see, and the larger one here. That is where the heating element is located. In order to test the heating elements, it's just like any other water heater. You're going to set your tester to a low ohms range. In this case, it's 200. Touch it to the terminals, and you should get around 10 ohms. It may be a little higher, it may be a little lower, depending on the wattage of the element. But it should be in the general area of around 10 ohms. It's also a very good idea when testing the heating element resistance to remove at least one wire. By doing so, that can prevent any other problems in the circuit from showing up at the terminals right here. So I like to, personally, I like to remove one wire. The second test you want to perform on the heating elements to ensure they're working properly is to test between each screw and the stainless body itself. To do that, Put your meter on the highest setting possible. I'm just going to do 20 meg ohm. Touch one probe there. And then you're going to touch another probe to the chamber. Go to each screw. And you should see absolutely nothing show up. If anything registers here, that's going to indicate a severely corroded heating element, which is allowing current to flow from this terminal here into the element, through the water, and to ground. So you're going to have to replace that. On the other side here, you can see there's an outlet temperature sensor. The control board monitors the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature. Now these are called NTC thermistors, which means negative temperature coefficient. As the temperature of the thermistor gets cooler, the resistance goes higher. As the temperature of the thermistor inside the sensor gets higher, the resistance goes lower. I'm going to give you a quick demo. Just unplug one right here. Take the connector. Insert a needle. Take another one. There. Connect one jumper wire there and connect your other jumper wire there making sure nothing's short like that as you can see the reading is 112,000 ohms if you apply heat like by holding my hand here you see the value is dropping from my body heat if you apply cold I'm going to take some cold water Touch it to the side, and you can see the cool water is making it go back up. Put some cold water on there. 
and that's how you're going to test those. Test each one, make sure heat makes it go lower, and make sure cold by placing an ice cube makes that number go much higher. Do the same test on the inlet and the outlet sensors. Disconnect that. If you notice that you don't have any power showing up on the control board, first thing you're going to want to do is verify that you do have 240 volts on the lugs going into the heater. If you do, the next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to test the transformer, which is right here. You could pull this wire up. To test the primary side of the transformer, that's the one closest to the power going in. Right here, this black and white connector is right next to this harness, which goes to the transformer. The white side you see here, this is the secondary lower voltage output, which is then rectified by these four diodes you see right here. So we're going to check the transformer. That's 5,500 ohms. That reading will vary, but when you probe this connection right here, you should have a reading. Plug that back in. Next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the secondary side here. Probe that should be lower, way lower, so turn this down to the 200 ohm setting. And that's 18.5 ohms. So what that's telling me is that the primary and secondary windings on this transformer are okay. If you want, what you could do is you could put your meter to AC voltage. In my case, it would be down here. Set it for 20. You could probe there and there while power is being applied to the entire unit. You have to be very careful. You don't want to get shocked when you do this. So put on a glove or lay the connector on a piece of wood so you could just get the probes and push down and check the voltage while the unit is powered up. You should see AC voltage coming off of this connector. If you do see AC voltage, you could then plug that back in and rule out the transformer as being a problem. Once you know the transformer is working okay, there's only a couple of other issues that would cause these triacs not to activate. The low voltage circuitry that you see on the power board controls these two optocouplers or opto isolators. If you don't know what these are, you're going to want to refer to my video right here. The video will open in a new window. You can pause that video, and when you're done watching this one, you can watch the other video to understand how these optocouplers or optoisolators operate. The control board is what tells the optoisolator when to trigger. When the optoisolator triggers, it allows the triac to turn on, and then when the triac turns on, your heating elements will turn on. So you rule out the heating elements, you rule out the triax, and you can go backwards to even ruling out the opto isolators if you refer to my other video. Over here, this is a thermostat. Each one of the tubes, it's hard to see, there's one here and there's one there. When the water is cool inside this unit, you should be able to have a connection across these terminals. That indicates continuity. Current is allowed to flow across. Check each one the way I just showed you between the terminals 
as long as current is flowing through with cooler water inside the unit, you're going to know these are functioning properly. There's not too much else the average person can do with this unit besides swap out the transformer, swap out the triax, swap out the temperature sensors on the inlet and outlet, swapping out the thermostats, and swapping out the heating elements. Some people like myself, if there's a problem with the opto isolators, which control the triax, I could swap those out. Or if there's a problem with some of these other components in here, I could even change those as well. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how your tankless water heater works. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.